How can a person be free from different fears? I already mentioned that with each kind of fear, a person must do the following, according to God's words. Remember that when God created man, He did not give them fear. Fear is a spirit that will accompany a person until God becomes the foundation of their life. Never forget that God gave people the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Each person just needs to make a right decision in their situations, whether to act in love, power, or a sound mind. Remember that God is love and He is Almighty. If He is by your side in a certain situation, who can be against you? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8:31. No one must focus on their self or be afraid of appearing in a ridiculous situation. Swimming is best to learn in water, they say. While constantly striving for perfection, people lose the opportunity to progress step by step. For example. They study a language, but they would not use what they already know, fearing that their vocabulary is not sound enough and the pronunciation is not clear enough. They simply need to keep in mind that many people are not fluent in the foreign languages they know, but still they use what they know as they have no complexes. There is another type of fear: one might be afraid of another person. A teacher, someone in authority, or a prominent person. In such case, it is better to find out the reason of that fear. Fear of teachers might be caused by inability to demonstrate one's knowledge. There are students of high schools and colleges who prepare their lessons quite well at home, but the presence of a prominent person or a teacher creates a hindrance in their mind, and they forget everything in a moment. In this case, it is better not to strain oneself and to relax, as physical tension affects the brain as well. The more the brain and the senses are agitated, the more the inner tension is evident. A person is confused and worried when they pay attention to the negative thoughts in their mind, that shout, "You can't do this!" or "You will fail." Such a person needs to relax and pay no attention to the negative thoughts shouting inside. They need to remember how excellently they master their topics and to consider their knowledge, not those who are there in the classroom or auditorium. In their mind, they must focus on the thought that they know the lesson very well and they have a great opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge. Fear of someone in authority or a prominent person can stem from the desire to show the person excessive respect or to consider them a superhuman. This can be caused by managers who are so much focused on themselves that they want to be feared by their personnel. Fear can be caused by ignorance of the truth. There is a well-known Armenian fable. About a foolish cuckoo and a cunning fox. Once upon a time, there was a hill. On the hill, a tree. In the tree, a hollow. In the hollow, a nest. In the nest, three nestlings. And mother cuckoo. The end of the evil by Hovhannes Tumanyan. So one day, the fox comes and starts bullying the cuckoo. He says that the tree belongs to him. Indignant at how the cuckoo dared to build a nest in it, the fox demands the cuckoo's nestlings one after another, or threatens to bring his axe and cut the tree off. The cuckoo believes it and throws her nestlings one after another to feed the greedy fox. The fabulist calls the cuckoo foolish. A person who, without inquiring the facts, gives in. To threats of others, and in panic, fulfills their orders, however inhuman they might be, is in the same foolish situation. I do not deny that in some instances, that one who threatens does have strength and power, but we must never forget that our righteous King, who created the universe and loves the humanity, 
is the most powerful one. Goliath threatened like that. Saul was a ruler like that. However, what ultimately happens to them? When a person lives according to God's heart, the Lord is the tower of their salvation, and He executes justice on the arrogant that come against them. In each situation, it is necessary to pray and ask the Lord to give a way out. The Lord has an extraordinary solution for each situation, so one does not need to lose their peace and give in to fear. Fear of authorities or other prominent people can also stem from lack of love, as there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. First John 4:18. It is impossible to be afraid of someone who, whom you love. A person in authority can win a place in their subordinate's heart. However, sometimes they knowingly or unknowingly treat badly or wrong the subordinate, and the latter is confused. For a person who loves, this is the right moment to test themselves, whether they still love or their heart and mind are filled with offense. Anger and hatred. Fear can also stem from lack of professional knowledge or inferiority complex. In any case, it is important to analyze the origin of fear. Each person, after having honestly checked with their inner man and having learned the reason of their fears, can take appropriate steps to become free from them. As I already said, there are many fears. Actually, there are more than 500 different phobias. The devil constantly torments people by arousing fears of the opinions of others, present and future, political reforms and economic crises, natural disasters and wars, incurable diseases and death, losing the loved ones, etc. In order to be free from any kind of fear, one must look to Jesus Christ and His Word. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, he wanted to follow Him. Having heard Jesus call, he boldly came out of the boat and walked on water. He succeeded because he looked to Jesus. The sea was still raging, and for a moment, Peter took his eyes off from Jesus and looked at the storm. And when Peter had come. Down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, "Lord, save me!" And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and said to him, "Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt?" Matthew fourteen twenty nine to thirty one. If Peter had not given his hand to Jesus, he would have been drowned. The same happens to everyone. As long as a person's eyes are on the Word of God, they boldly walk in every difficult situation and overcome. However, when they open their ears and eyes and start listening to the things all listen to and seeing the things all see, their minds are shaken by the stormy waves of fear, ready to consume them. Paul was in prison. He already knew his verdict, execution. Each moment, they could open the door of his prison cell and take him to be executed. Timothy was in freedom, attacked by persecutions and tribulations, and the storming fear was about to drown him. He wrote to Paul, who was in prison, asking for advice. Paul, who was waiting for his execution, wrote. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy, one seven. Paul was not afraid of those who killed the body, but could not kill the soul. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father 
who is in heaven. Matthew 10, 28 to 33. The fear of God and His Word helped Paul to live in peace and in glorious presence of the Lord. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose I cannot tell. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Philippians 1, 20-25 When these verses are in a presence spirit as a revelation, death has no sting and fear has nothing to do anymore in their life.